So what we're doing today is we're pairing a play button. This is the most common complaint with these units. Once again, it's a Denon MC6000 Mark I, not the Mark II. Very important, there's a, a distinction. These are, um, uh, the, as I said, the buttons are notorious for going wrong, specifically the play button uh, on this deck. Uh, this one is the one I replaced previously. I think I actually did the Q and the play, I can't remember. I certainly did the play on the right side and it's been working probably for a good half a year. And then just recently the play button on the left button, left side, has really been playing up. So that's what we're going to replace today. Um, what you're going to need, apart from the standard set of tools, you don't need a lot of specialised tools, but what you will need is this part which is the switch. I'm going to see if we can zoom in on this. Okay, so hopefully you can see the part number there. That's what I focus on, not sure if it's working so well. But more importantly, you can see these little switches, um, which are just a contact switch. And you just they press in and out. That's the part that we're going to be replacing. Um, so interestingly enough, the part itself is not that hard to replace. It's actually getting to it in this uh, particular unit that is where all the fun begins. So we're just going to get started. Some of this uh, footage will speed up as we go. I've got um, on my computer my list of steps that I took so I'll be referring to that as we go. So the very first thing to do is <clears throat> we're going to remove the um, screws here. There's uh, two three, four, six per side. So we'll do that right now. We're going to remove the screws. Okay, that's the first one. Looks like I'm uh, missing a screw already. Okay, now one of the things you'll see me do, which is just my system which slows me down but helps me not lose things, is I, uh, I have a board over here which I tape all my loose screws to and I number them so I know what I've got where, where they've come from. In this case I just leave the screws in the holes and uh, move them. We've got another three screws on the side here. See if we can zoom in a little. Probably can't see them with the light the way they are but they're at the top. going to reposition it so you can see a little bit better. There we go. It's 
So those screws, once again, they're at the top. So they're very close to the top. There's one there, one there, and one there. Three screws, both sides. Uh, get to them in a second. We'll do the other side. feel a little bit guilty about using this electric drill, I'm sure a lot of the pros would just be shaking their heads right now, but it is what it is. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to start my um, uh, screw finding system. Okay, so um, just showing you there's my little system right here for keeping track of the screws. I sort of, um, I just put a piece of paper down and then I actually draw a, a little diagram and then I stick the screws that I've just pulled out of onto a bit of paper with the number of screws that are there too. So it's um, like I said if you've got a um, magnetic board that you can write on that's really good but I'm just uh, not in those leagues don't um, do this stuff enough. Well, more of a hobby to repair this stuff I guess than anything else. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to go to the back and remove another four screws from the very back, also up the top. There's the one, two, three, four. They're easy enough to see. Alright, one, two, three, four. And then there's another four screws in the front. One, two, three, four. You can see this uh, unit's had a lot of use, you know. Crossfade has been moved backwards and forwards. There's actually some rubbing here. Uh, I don't scratch a lot, so I don't really use the platters um, but you can also see the markings on the underneath the volume faders they're pretty much faded all right so let's get those four screws so the next thing we're going to do is uh, flip the bad boy over View from the bottom. And we're going to get uh, one, two, we're going to get all these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, these, um, these uh, Velcro strips are just something that I put on, so I've just got to get around one of them, and uh, the rest of them will be fine. There's a little view of my diagrams, if you like. Okay, back to the board. Okay, so the next step now is to remove the uh, two cables that are inside. Let's see if we can bring this down a little bit. Um, but essentially, what you've got to do is very, very carefully uh, get into the uh, back of the 
you've got to turn it upside down so that the knobs are upside down. Then there's one cable just here at the front. In order to get that cable out, you've got to pull uh, very gently on the side of the connector. There's a plastic thing. I'll show you once we get it open. And then there's another one on the re on over here. It basically just pulls out, but you have to pull it out very gently. You've got to try and grab those uh, connectors here. Oh, you can't see them in the in the in the view. I'll uh, I'll show you that in a second. And then lastly, I've got another connector down the bottom, which you can see right here. And I've got to pull that out as well. Now, once again, I don't think you're going to be able to really see it. So I'll do my best, but I'll and I'll show you once I get it done. Also, the lighting doesn't seem to be as good as what it needs to be. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently push on the sides of the connectors. There's two little plastic uh, rims, for lack of a better word, which push forward. And then I can just gently ease the cable out and out it comes. And then I've successfully opened up the back end. So let's have a look at that because it's so crucial what I just did. Uh, first of all there's three cables here that I just took off. I took off this one, this one, and this one which is on the board down here. I took off this one first. Now a word of caution with these things, you have to be incredibly gentle, you can't, if they're not coming, don't force them, because you'll break them, and the moment you break them, it's all over, you you know, you're looking at a lot more expensive repair than what we're trying to do here. The first one came out of, let's see if we can see it, yeah we can, this little white connector right here, I'm just going to find something to point at it this white connector right here. On this connector, the, the strip, the cable actually goes in this way, in that way. So it comes over the top and goes back in. And there's two tiny little, oh, I, I can't even, I don't know what to call them. They're like little plastic levers that go in and out. I don't know if you can see that. You can actually get your fingernail in there. And then when they're out in this, in this direction, that means they're released and they'll let go of the cable. All right, the um, the second cable uh, went in down here. Let me uh, zoom in on that. Hopefully you can see that just here. And it's the same thing. It's got these two little, but this one actually went in. Which way did this one go in? Uh, I think it went in. Uh, it, it went in that way, I think. Yeah, because you've got those, once again, it's the same mechanism. So you've got to gently pull that out and then the cable release will release. And lastly, you've got this one over here on the other side of the board. Hopefully that will focus. Yeah, there it is. This little guy here. And um, I just gently pull on either side and that comes out. That's plugged into a... Uh, a, um, a socket on the other side of the board. So that's it and uh, now we've got the two boards apart and that's the bottom obviously. So let's just put this aside for the second. It's um, I can't express how careful you have to be um, when you're pulling those cables out and obviously again when you're putting them back in, you're going to want to have to be really careful. And now we're just going to remove all the uh, knobs. And what I do with the knobs is uh, keep them in the order that I take them off so that I don't have to forget them later on. And what I tend to do is put all the switches to some sort of zero or obvious place where they can be put back on again.
if that makes sense. Okay, that's kind of all the all the controls. So I'm going to take off all the knobs, just sort of lift off, and I try and keep them in the same order that I've taken them off on. Okay, so that's all the knobs gone. Just to reconfirm that. Yep, no knobs. What I did is uh, just arranged all the knobs on a, on this card in the same order that they came off. Now the uh, challenge is to move this over somewhere else away without bumping it. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, so there's around about, um, let's count them, the screws that are about to come out. There's one, two, hope you can see my finger here, all right, three, uh, then there's another one right here, four, there's another one opposite over here, five, and then there's another three across here. One, two, and three. So six, seven, eight screws in total. We're gonna. And one of the reasons why this repair is so challenging is that there's just so many freaking screws. There's just way too many. Um, and then we're about to remove a whole heap of nuts as well, and the nuts are also just a pain to get out. you see that in a second. So now this should just come off. There it is. And we can see underneath here the panel without the board. So I'm going to put the panel out of the way. There's quite a bit of dust on this. We'll clean that a little bit later on that's the panel so let's get rid of that okay you can see my uh, little screw board coming along there so I don't lose anything it's getting considerably lighter as we remove the uh, components so uh, the next thing is we're going to do is we're going to work on these adapters right here okay so yeah so they just they just pull off very gently. There's some glue that there was there from the previous time, but if you're just very gentle, you can actually just pull them off. Uh, see if I can zoom in on that. And hopefully I won't be in the way too much while I'm doing it. I'm just grabbing it very lightly and then very gently wiggling it backwards and then it comes off clear like that. Uh, we can also pull this one out. Uh, I think it's one of those things where you can just gently lever it out. If you've got any fingernails that will definitely help. Yeah, it's coming out, and there it is, just basically held in place with friction. So that's it. Now, next step we have to do is, uh, you can see these two 
little wheels right there uh, hopefully you can see that there is a little plastic uh, sorry there's a little wire coming out of that <laughs> and um, it's soldered onto the board you have to remove the solder and desolder that right there and also on the other side this one right here so we're going to go ahead and plug in our solder iron and get it all heated up so we'll just take a pause while we do that okay we're back and we're uh, now going to uh, desolder this um, wire Okay, there we go, that's one. Now we're going to do the same on the other. There it is. So that's... Uh, that's done. This little um, tool is a uh, desolder pump. So basically when you hit the button it sucks in the solder that's heated up and takes it away so that's good so now the next step we're going to do is turn over the board again and now we're going to basically get to our very close to our final step which is to remove all of these nuts there's quite a few of them as you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. I don't know. Something like 30 nuts that have to come out. This part's just ridiculous, but it has to be done, so that's all there is to it. Okay, so we've just finished taking off all the nuts and all the washers, which was just a crazy big task. And now we've got another big task in front of us, but basically it's one of the last big tasks. But, you know, it's just another big task, which is just crazy when it comes to taking this thing apart. So we're going to turn it upside down again. And this is just uh, removing screws. Uh, there's something like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's something like 16 to 18 screws that have got to come out here. 
it's just crazy. So you can see a lot of them. Here's one, here's another, there's another, there's another, there's another there, there's another there, there's another there, here, 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 uh, here, here, here. Uh, here, 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 and that's it. But obviously, there's a lot. So let's get started and just get these uh, out. What a difference. Okay. It's meant to be uh, a little cush cushion right here you got to be really, make sure you don't lose that. It's really important. Okay. So, oh, just some more washers just fell out. That's okay. So that's the empty uh, push button board. And there's the back of it. And uh, obviously, obviously the platters stay locked on that board so that's a good thing. I'm going to put this out of the way. Got a couple of washers that just fell through. And I'm going to move all those screws that we just took out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, 19, 20, 21 screws. Unbelievable. Okay, so finally we've got what we've come for, which is the play button right here. It actually says play and pause on the board, and then it says Q over here. And these are the two pitch bends here. So this is the one that we want to replace. But I think we're going to go ahead and do this one as well. Because if I remember last time, I think I did both of these at the same time. So just to zoom in. This is the printed circuit board that we've spent the last hour or two trying to get to. And uh, that's what it looks like on the back, which we've already seen. And this is the button that we want to replace right here. It's causing us dramas. And if we look at the rear side of it, there it is right here. And the one that I replaced last time, you can actually see it, it's right there. So it was the play button. And you can, probably hard to see in the camera, but on this one I can see my solders, which don't look as good as all the other solders around here. But this is the guy that we want to get out today. So we're going to turn the solder iron back on. Uh, I don't think we're going to do the Q buttons. Q buttons have been working fine, and of course, oh, you do use the Q buttons probably more than the play buttons, but 
I'm not going to mess with something that's working perfectly fine. So just to try and show you this up close, I don't know how close I can get to it. Uh, but it's... which solder is it? Let me just double check it. Right there. It's this, these two right here. Right here. There's two solder joints that I'm gonna solder right there. So let's see if we can uh, position the camera so that you can see as much as possible. These two right here. Okay, let's see if the solder's hot enough yet. It is. Just triple confirming which that I'm doing the right one. Play pause, that's Q right there, yep. Okay, so we're going to heat this bad boy up. One. It's two. This side's still stuck in a little bit, so we're going to try and loosen him off. What I'm going to do is just keep a grip on him. Now I can't see what I'm doing. And there's the old switch. Okay. So let's get the new switch, which is here. Just going to widen up a little bit. Once again, if you're looking for the part number, hopefully that's focused, that's the part number. Switches look like this. Here we go. <laughs> and solder. Here we go.
All right, that looks nice and flush. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, I just need to solder them in there and cut them off and we should be good. Okay, let's, uh, let's tin our tip. Take that as done. Uh, so it's in there now, right here, and I'm just going to cut the edges off the. Uh, I'm going to cut the edges off the uh, tips. I didn't really mean to do that in one go. All right, and we're going to solder the two uh, wires back on. Okay, so even with all those screws back in place, there was like 20 of them. There's still all these screws over here. You can see the washers and screws and all the rest of it. Just a huge amount of screws. Um, and it's not so much that there's a problem with that amount of screws for this circuit board. It's just that there's a problem with the fact that uh, you've got to take all those screws just to get to one switch. That's the problem. Okay, now we're going to put all the nuts and bolts on again, all the washers, this is crazy part of this process. Uh oh, that's way too big for that one. I don't know why that's way too big. I didn't notice a difference between big and small before. I just did then. I'm going to put the bigger ones up here. Definitely seem to fit better. So here we go again, connecting the um, uh, the bottom back to the uh, to the top of the of the assembly, and this is um, as I said before, probably one of the hardest things to do, and you've got to be really delicate here. Uh, there are these two ribbon cables here that uh, are going to go into their perspective slots on the back of the board. There's one here. Which I'm sure it's hard to see and then there's another one right here and you have to lift these little latches up and then push them back down once you've got the cable in and it's it's a little bit of a manipulating feat uh, to do it so uh, let's go ahead and do it you've also got this one over here this is the easiest one to do because you can basically just uh, balance the board on 
and gently slip that in. It's a friction lock, so just nice firm push down, and you're in. Uh, so now I lower the board down to just recall how this goes in. Now that looks like it's just slipping in. You're probably not going to see this too well. This just slips into the top one. Uh, sorry, the bottom one. Okay, that's in. And then while it's in, you have to tug on those little gates to tighten it back up. At the same time, being really careful that you're not going to mess everything up. Okay, so that's two that I've got. Now I'm up to the third one. Just trying to get a little bit of light from my iPhone. I'm not sure it's helping. I will try and bring this down to see if I can get you into the picture. But even if I get close, um, it's still hard because... Uh, so here's the little gate and it's going to go in here. And I think the phone's in the way. So this little guy here, the end of it, has to go into this gate right here, which is hard to see, right here. So the ribbon slips in. Oh, this is really difficult. I'm going to actually tilt the whole thing up on the side. So. I've slipped the ribbon in, it feels like it's nice and snug, and then I'm going to use these splodges to push down the uh, the little gate, is what I call it, make sure that it's in position. Really tough getting in there. That's it, the gate is in. Just double checking that that's in. Yeah, it looks in securely. Hopefully I've got it in far enough. Just pushing down a little bit more on both sides. So that's how you get those in. I don't know how much you saw of that, but because it's pretty tough to see. So now board can go down into the, uh, once again be really careful moving around here, and then it just sits in like that. It's quite okay at this point, you can gently rest it on the front, the platters take most of the support, and we're going to do these six here. Okay, so now we're going to plug it in. Actually, see if it works before we uh, put the rest on. So here we go. We're going to turn the machine on now. See if it works. Does its usual sequence. Looking good so far. Yep, that looks good. Happy about that. It's interesting. I think there's a blue LED that's out there. That's okay. Um, Actually got a computer running uh, an old version of Virtual DJ, so we'll see if that works. That's working nicely. That's working. It's working. It's working, and that's working. So, we've successfully um, got our play button working, as you can see. It's, it, it goes to green every time, and uh, 
it's working the way it should do. So we're good to uh, keep putting everything back together again. Uh, actually, let's see if we can get our meters up. There it is. Our master's working nicely. So that's excellent. That's it. Success. So we'll put it back together again. Test it with our main computer. So let's power the unit on. And we know that the power, everything looks good as it restores up. That's excellent. Good. We're going to fire up the computer. Okay. So the unit is playing the queue. And the play button works exactly as it should. Very happy. So there you have it. Um, we've repaired a play button on the Denon MC6000 Mark I. Here it is right here. Um, the problem isn't that anything's incredibly hard to do. The problem is that you've got to do so much work just to replace one button and also these parts are hard to come by. Uh, so um, if anybody uh, finds this useful video uh, finds this video useful you can see how tired I am at this time of the night um, please go ahead and make a comment let me know that it'd be nice to know that you've gotten something out of it um, and if anybody needs to repair uh, Denon MC6000 and um, doesn't want to do it themselves then just drop me a line via YouTube you can use the uh, shoot me a message and um, we'll take it from there all right signing off and uh, all the best, a uh, uh, big shout out to all the DJs using uh, the Denon MC6000, El Capitan and uh, Virtual DJ8. Later.